I mean, we we right. have a we have a we have a witness. It's called on deep background because we can't give her name out, but I can tell you she is very reputable. She's a very reputable person, and she saw David Mack and Rafael Perez at the Peterson Auto Museum the day before the event, checking the place out, looking around, checking the place mm. out. And she saw them, and now, unfortunately, and she was actually, I can tell you this much, she was working the event. So, in other words, she was a member of a company who was actually providing services for the event. Not like catering services, exactly. like informational services, okay? Right, like I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So, you're like an organizer. And she saw Right, so there. she wasn't just a, a, a fucking groupie standing around looking. Exactly. Like she was there, right. you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And she saw them, and she called her dad, who was an attorney. And she said, Dad, I saw these guys. What do I do? He said, stay the hell out of it. Okay. Mm. And, and you know, and I can't probably tell you dozens of people have had that same advice. It's bad for an investigation, but it's practical in the sense of look what you're dealing with, you know, at the end of the day. So, mm-hmm. but, we did, but when we talked, we talked. She said the same thing. It didn't seem important at the time. She really didn't know who these dudes were until later when she saw their picture and David Mack with the robbery and all that, and then Rafael Perez getting accused of this with the Russell Poole theory. And later on, she realized, oh, man, I saw those guys were there. I saw them the day before. I saw them. So, mm. you know, it, again, that's, that's how a case turns. It turns on things happening like that. And, again, that's why I keep going back, and I know I sound like I'm throwing rocks, and I don't mean to be. But, you know, you got to ask yourself, how serious are you about an investigation when you haven't turned over any new rocks in six years? Okay? Right. You know, because there will be people, and I'm not talking about the streets. You know, everybody talks about the streets. You know, the streets say this and the streets say that. Let's be a little more specific, okay? Let's try to get to people, not the streets. I mean, let's get to people that, that are reputable, people that, you know, don't carry a rap sheet 10 miles long. And if they do, let's find out if they're telling the truth anyway. I'm not saying just because a person's right. got a record that they're not credible. They could be credible. And, you know, I don't right, care if you're – streets ain't going to do nothing but feed you bullshit. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so and I, I know I know more people that are claimed to be honorable people, ministers and stuff like that, that lie more than, you know, priests, that lie more than most, you know, convicts do. So, you know, it, it's all relative. Yeah, most definitely. Do, most do definitely. you think this case will um, ever be solved, though? Do you think it would ever be some evidence that somebody could provide? Or I'm, I'm thinking basically it, it had to be whoever did the shooting will have to actually come up and say, I did the shooting, and here go the gun to it. Or do you actually think this these cases can ever be solved? Well, Brett Becker said it the best. He said even if that was the case and somebody came up and had the murder weapon in their hand and it was still smoking and they put it on the counter and they said, I killed Tupac and here's the gun and it's still smoking – and by the way, I went down and I actually got the ballistics report run myself just to prove to you that this is the gun that killed him and put that on the desk and say, here, arrest me right now. I want to confess. He probably still wouldn't get a fair trial for all those reasons I talked about before, facing your accusers and things like that. You know, um, even, the, even when somebody confesses to something and they say, yeah, I did it, you still have to put them through that trial. And the burden is still on the state to prove, even if the guy says he did it, to prove beyond that that he did it because you know unfortunately people lie about that kind of stuff all the time you know people right, they, I was they, about they, to say they, 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 yeah, you, know. Case like that. you know what I'm saying yeah that's crazy so, man but I still but I still hold out hope because I don't believe personally that all the people that were in the car that shot at Tupac and Suge are dead and if they are alive and if they were part of it and if there's any reason to believe that they might have been involved, okay, then I do have hope. Mm-hmm. I have hope that, that something may come of it. Will we get an indictment? Probably not. But I think a lot of people would be happy just having the closure to, that, to get the official word to say, you know what, yeah, I mean, the, these people were involved. These people had something to do with it. And, and uh, you know, maybe this guy was the shooter or that guy was the shooter. Uh, you know, and, and we just unfortunately won't get a fair trial for the guy, but we're going to close this, right. as, you know, the best we could do. And I've never heard that. Right. Yet. I haven't heard the cops say 
this is the best we could do. In fact, I heard Greg Kading's boss tell LA Weekly, and you guys have to look up the article, but he said, hey, we tried and tried to run everything to its logical conclusion, but we could never get anything to back it up. And that was it. So he basically admitted it was a failure. He's like, we just gave up. You know, so I haven't heard the cops say that yet. I haven't heard him say we solved it. The, Greg Kading's boss right. didn't say that. He didn't say that we solved it. He said we had some leads and we were hoping for other things that would help reinforce those leads, but that never happened. Right. 